guys, Angus from Spotted Hog Airsoft here today with another Airsoft video review. Now today we're going to be taking a look at an Airsoft AEG that personally I've loved for a long time. And that AEG is this one right here. This is the ICS L85A2 Carbine Airsoft AEG. It's a rather nice Airsoft model. If you're interested in picking it up, there'll be a link down below in the description to SpottedHogAirsoft.com where you can pick it up for about $325. Now with that being said, you guys know I love the L85 style airsoft guns and this one certainly is no exception let's hop right into this video all right now as always let's start off this video review by going over the guns external construction now out of the box the LED5 immediately expresses ICS's excellence and quality in their airsoft gun builds essentially the entire AG is constructive metal there are a couple plastic pieces on here and those are obviously the green ones you're currently seeing these are constructed of a rather solid and durable polymer component with a nice texture to it that makes them very very comfortable in all honesty especially back here with the butt plate where it's nice and textured to aid in gripping onto the shoulder like I said the plastic pieces are the green ones. These include your handguard, your pistol grip, your dust cover, your bolt release, the butt of the rifle, as well as the cheek rest on the other side of the AEG. Everything else, including your magazine, the body of the gun, your iron sights, your trigger, your fire selector switch, your outer barrel, your flash hider, that's all constructed of metal, as well as the screws holding the replica together. Just from past experience, I can tell you that pieces might get a little bit wiggly, uh, probably the pistol grip as well as the outer barrel. Of course, that's over time. I've been running my LD5 for years, and those are really the only pieces that have fallen a little bit uh, unstable over the past couple times I've used it. Another quick note about externals, you'll notice on the right side of this AEG, you do have an engraved serial number, as well as some nice painted on markings about the LD5A2 itself. You can also tell that some of the external parts, namely the handguard here, were borrowed from ICS's L86 AEG. As you can tell by the marking on the handguard here, light support L86A2 on the L85 carbine. Now as far as internals on this LED5 do go, this gun does have a metal gearbox. It doesn't utilize ICS's split gearbox design, but the FPS is adjustable. You can take it from a high power range to a medium to a low, or wherever you'd like to set it depending on what style of game you'll be playing. This is a bullpup style AEG, meaning your gearbox is located in the back of the replica. Makes a little bit back heavy, but the advantage to that is you get a rather long inner barrel in a nice short and compact form. Overall, I've never been disappointed by ICS internals, and this LD5 certainly has a nice example of them inside of it. Now, when you're talking about the AEG's internals, obviously you want them to work and fire the weapon. Well, in an electric gun, you certainly do need a battery, and let's start talking about features, beginning with, in my opinion, the most important, where the battery goes. Now, like the regular other LED5 series, the carbine does use the handguard as its method of storing the battery. In order to access your battery compartment, you first want to lift up on the base, which will open like so. And once you've gone ahead and done that, you can simply unlatch the bottom half and it will swing open like so, revealing your battery compartment and your small type connector there. Now obviously this battery compartment is a little bit snug. You necessarily can't hold a gigantic battery in here. And keep in mind that like most ICS AEGs, this gun does not include a battery. Personally, I would recommend a rather small 7.4 volt LiPo as this compartment can hold those. Overall, the battery compartment is easy to access and easy to change in the field, something I really do like. The only thing I could possibly really complain about with the battery compartment on this carbine would be the fact that the lid isn't necessarily secured by anything incredibly strong. It's not like it's going to be moving around as you run, but if you wanted to, you could easily just apply a little bit of force and move it outward like so. There's really nothing to latch it shut, so to speak. Now, once you have that battery installed, obviously you can go ahead and fire the AEG. Your fire selector switch is located almost at the back of the gun, just in front of the butt plate there, and it's this small sort of lever. Now, it does have two settings when it's flipped upward like so. So the gun is on semi-auto, and if you were to flip it down so that it's more horizontal, then the replica would be on full auto. The selector switch is nice, it requires a little bit of force to move, so it's not like it's going to be sliding between settings. However, keep in mind the metal selector switch on the metal body will eventually result in some paint wear in this area. Wondering where your safety is then, since it's not on the selector switch? Well, it's this small black piece right here, located just above the trigger and just behind the handguard. It's just a small button style safety. When it's pushed out the left side of the gun like it is now, the gun is capable of firing. If you were to push it inward so that it was sticking out of the right side of the gun, then the gun would be on safe and you can't pull the trigger. The safety is actually located in a nice convenient position. You can immediately take your hand off the trigger and go ahead and push it in to turn it on safe if you're off the field. And also it requires a little bit of force to move, so don't think you'll be accidentally hitting it with your hand and knocking the gun on safe when you need to fire. 
Now as far as the AEG's magazine goes, obviously it's currently inside the gun. And in order to eject the mag, you simply want to go ahead and push in on the release located here on the left side of the gun. I noticed that the magazine really likes to stick up in there, so you do kind of have to force it out with quite a bit of force. It's also a real pain to get up there, and that's only with the stock magazine that's included. Other mid caps simply slipped right in for me. Inside the magazine, well, there's very little wiggle, seeing as how it really is stuck in there. Now as far as the magazine goes when it's outside of the gun, there's really nothing significant or special about it. It's your standard 450 round high capacity M4 style airsoft magazine and works like any other high cap. The BBs are loaded via the trap door at the top, they feed through the top as well, and also the BBs are wound upward via the gear located at the bottom of the magazine. Overall, it's your standard M4 high cap constructed of metal with a little bit of a nice touch with some ICS engravings located on the bottom here. The magazine feeds well like any other high cap, just hard to keep up with a high rate of fire that you might find when you're using a higher voltage battery in the AEG. Otherwise though, typical high cap. Just a quick note, after repeated testing during the video, I noticed the magazine did seem to break in a little bit and slide into the magazine well quite a bit easier. Now talking iron sights, obviously you get two of them on this AEG, a front and a rear one. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of them closer right now. The rear sight, which is reminiscent of a carrying handle on an M16 style airsoft AEG, is adjustable before windage simply by going ahead and turning this gear here. Also, when looking down the sight, you have two apertures to choose from, an open hole shown here, as well as a pinhole shown here. Obviously, you'd look through this to line up with your front sight, which in turn is an enclosed sight post that is adjustable for elevation. You can adjust it rather simply via a gear located on the side. Obviously, this is meant to be lined up with your rear sight when you're aiming. Overall, the iron sights are accurate to the gun, and they're nice. Personally, I love the look of them stock on this AEG. However, if you wanted to put an optic on it, they are removable. The trouble is this gun does not utilize a standard 20 millimeter rail mount up top. It actually has a 16 millimeter rail mount. Therefore, you're limited in optics. The one you're kind of supposed to have on the LD5 style would be a SUSAT style sight. However, if you wanted to override the 16 millimeter rail, there are standard 20 millimeter rail kits available for the gun. Now the LED5 carbine by ICS does actually have a functional bolt catch. When you go ahead and pull the charging handle back like so, you can simply flip up this piece and at that point it'll lock the charging handle back so you can access your hop up, which is this gear right here. Overall, the ICS LED5 hop up is pretty effective as you'll see in just a few moments and it's just your standard gear style. It's also larger so that if you have large gloves you're playing in the winter, you can still fit your finger in there to adjust it. When you finish adjusting your hop up, simply pull back on the charging handle and it'll release, giving you a somewhat satisfying clack. All right, so you heard me go ahead and hint at it there. Let's go ahead and take a few shots at a target and chrono this AEG in the performance test portion of our video. For the chrono portion of the video, I loaded up the magazine with 0.2 gram BBs and installed a 7.4 volt LiPo battery to test this gun out. As far as results go, on the highest setting for the adjustable FPS, we saw a 400 to 410 feet per second very consistently. Overall, the consistency was great. We saw what you'd want to use for an outdoor style gun. And when it came to rate of fire, we saw a respectable rate of fire of almost 800 rounds per minute combined with 13 rounds per second, as you can see. Overall, respectable rate of fire and a very high woodland style FPS. For the accuracy test portion of the video, I loaded up with 0.25 gram BBs, kept the same 7.4 volt LiPo battery, and adjusted my hop up. Then I set, set up back at about 130 feet away, took a few shots downrange. Semi-auto, I'm pretty pleased. Hit the target essentially every time except for my first shot, which I always take to kind of get on target a little bit. All the BBs come into contact with the target itself, and as far as full auto goes, aside from that first burst, which I'm not quite sure was going on, I was able to hit the target a good majority of the time. All the BBs went in a straight line, and a good majority of them came into contact with the target on full auto. So overall, the accuracy of this AEG was quite satisfying. Definitely something I'd use in a woodland game with accuracy like that. Alright, so with those final shots being fired there, let's go ahead and hop into the final conclusion of this video review. One click disclaimer, I'm taking a look at this gun as an airsofter, concerned with how it will handle in the actual airsoft games, not as a reviewer. I don't care how much it look, how great it looks sitting at a table. I care about how it will perform in the actual airsoft field. Now that being said, like I stated at the beginning of this video, 
I love the L85 series by ICS. I've been running one of these for years. It's what I always use at the Airsoft games. And naturally, I love this little carbine as well. It's just an awesome short version of the gun I love so much sitting at home. Now, there are a couple things I could complain about, though. If you're somebody who wants that gun, you can take it out of the box and customize the heck out of it, put a fancy optic on it. This really isn't for you. There's minimal customization unless you were to buy aftermarket parts, such as the conversion rail for up top, so you're limited in what you have directly out of the box. Personally, though, I love the L85 the way it looks. Performance issue aspects. The only thing I could really complain about there would be the fact that, hey, I'm in a game, this loose battery lid cover, it pops open, that's a couple more seconds I have to take to go ahead and shut that when I could be firing downrange at my opponent. Other than that, there's really nothing here that would hinder me from taking this thing out into a game and using it in a critical situation. It does have an excellent performance on it, as we just saw, with the FPS as well as the accuracy. Something to note, this shorter version here could probably do well in CQB, which you have the option because of the adjustable FPS in the gearbox. Things I didn't like externally, really nothing with the exception. I don't like how it says L86 on the handguard. I know they probably did that to save money. Why make a whole new batch just to replace one little word? But eh, it's the principle of the thing. I would have liked it better if it said L85. Other things I would certainly uh, promote for this AEG would be its unique look. If you're someone who wants a unique gun to run in the woodland field, this would certainly be it. You have an easy-to-change battery, and M4 magazine compatibility is huge in a world where a lot of airsofters just stick to the old basic M4. Again, wrapping it up, I love this AEG. I think it's phenomenal. A couple things I don't necessarily like, but hey, they're just preferences. And overall, I would certainly recommend this. So thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe.